If you're looking to buy or sell a house this spring, then this video is going to be a great start for you because we are going to cover everything you need to know about the Solano County housing market. We're gonna go over home prices, inventory, mortgage rates, and what a winning offer looks like if you're a buyer and seller in Solano County this spring. Let's, Let's go. go. Hi, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, I'm Lily Ratliff. I'm Brandon Ratliff. And we are a husband and wife real estate team here in Northern California who specialize in Solano County. Lily and I have been living in Solano County for over 10 years now, and we've been helping people just like you buy, sell, invest, and relocate here in Solano County. We absolutely love it. Yes, we do. So whether you're thinking of moving in the next nine days or 90 days, we wanna be your go-to resource. We wanna be able to help. So give us a call, text, email, or even schedule a Zoom meeting in the description and the link below. Hello. So let's get at it. Now, Lil and I always say the best experience start with realistic expectations, which is why we're gonna be breaking down the Solano County housing market for you today. But before we do that, a lot of the information we're gonna be sharing does apply to the national housing market, but, but, There's a but. <laughs> understand that real estate is hyper-local and it can drastically change depending on the area or region you're in. Yes, for example, a million dollar house here in Solano County could look drastically different, either bigger or smaller, right. depending on what location you're in right now. And it's very important that you consult with a local expert in your area so you are up to date with pricing and strategies for your specific area. Let's go ahead and dive into this because this has been quite an interesting market. I think it's been quite a roller coaster ride for sellers, buyers, real estate agents, lenders. I think we'd all agree. And where are we at right now? We are at a big standstill. Have you ever been on the freeway and it's just jam-packed, <laughs> bumper to bumper? That's, That's where we are at. It is on a standstill. Everyone's a little nervous. Everyone's, the market's very volatile right mm -hmm. now. And it's, it's definitely, you know, those on-ramps. I don't know if you guys have them, but here in California, we have on-ramps to help control the traffic. You see those red, green lights, right, that stop you from going onto the freeway? Well, that's what it's like right now into the market. Anytime those rates are going above 7%, it seems to be a red light for most buyers and sellers. And anytime it's below 6.5%, we're seeing a green light and an activity just shoots up through the roof. I wouldn't even mind a yellow light at this point. As long yeah. as we see some steadiness of forwardness, I would be happy. <laughs> but that is honestly the perfect analogy for what's happening right now because while rates have been going up and down, that's exactly what they've been doing. They have not been consistent. It's been mm -hmm. a very volatile market and the housing industry is reacting to that as well. Where does that leave home prices? Well, home prices are always dictated by supply and demand. And well, first, let's take a deeper dive into the supply. Now that is inventory or how many homes are currently on the market. Or lack of. Yes, lack of, which is, I think, going to be the case for the foreseeable future here in Solano County and possibly the rest of the United States. Uh, but right now, currently, you know, we ended February at about two months of inventory. Now that is one of the higher numbers that we have seen in the past 12 months. However, that is still well below normal when you consider that four to six months of inventory is considered a healthy market. And to give you a little perspective of what that means, right now at two months of inventory, that means that we would have no more houses left to sell after two months if no other homes went on the market in that time. So with lower inventory, we are just seeing a lack of options for our buyers. You know, we're having these conversations with them, you know, depending on their wish list, Homes are already hard to come by. When you add a 10 you know, page wish list of all the needs and wants, it does make it a little more difficult to find that home, but you're just gonna need a little more patience. However, if you find the home that you like and it's everything you want, you may need to expedite your timeline and you may need to be prepared for that. Now, when we're talking about home prices, what does that look like here in Solano County? Well, when we look at the same time last year in February, home prices or the average home price has gone down about 3%, so it went from $620,000 to $610,000. However, the price per square foot actually increased almost 8%. So it's a pretty stable market here in Solano County, and we're expecting to see that appreciation just because Solano County has become very popular. A lot of Bay Area residents are moving here because believe it or not, at that $600,000 price point, that makes us one of the most affordable counties in the Bay Area. So a lot of people come here, it's commuter friendly, and you can get a lot more for your buck. And just like any other county, your money's gonna go further in certain cities than others. So in Solano County, for example, Benicia is by far the most expensive place to buy a home. They have a median price point of about $760,000, whereas Dixon, they're actually one of the cheapest places that you can get when you look at price per square foot. So you're definitely gonna get more bang for your buck. And you're probably looking in Rio Vista and you're probably thinking, that's clearly the most affordable city here in Solano County, but 
those are majority of those homes are senior communities. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important to have a local realtor, someone who knows the area, can kind of help you navigate which cities, which neighborhoods are going to be perfect for your needs, your budget, and what you're really looking for as far as location. Whether you're buying or selling a house, you may be thinking to yourself, you know, with lack of inventory, it's a clear-cut seller's market, but that is just not the case with these high mortgage rates that are just dictating the market. Now, a lot of the buyers and sellers were used to the 2 to 3% mortgage rates oh, the good old days. in 2021 and just were taken back for a loop in 2023 when they reached at 8%. I was like, yes, that is quite an adjustment, right? And ever since then, typically we see sort of seasonal demand and ebb and flow with the housing market, mm -hmm. more people buy in the spring and summer markets. And while that is true, we're also seeing the housing market, especially here in Solano County, extremely dictated by mortgage rates, meaning that whenever they are dropping, that is when we are seeing increased activity. It does not matter the month. So the rates really have been a game changer. If you look at inventory in the last 15 months, inventory has reached as low as levels when rates were at 6.6% .6 or lower. Yeah, I mean, you can say the same thing when you look at pending sales here in Solano County in the last 15 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at February through May of 2023, when the rates were anywhere from like 6.2 to 6.5%, huge jump in the pending sales. But when you go ahead and look at September through December of that same year, when rates were above 7%, you see those pending sales seriously plummet down. So this is what we mean when we say it's a very volatile market that is very very much dictated by rates, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in Solano County. Are you saying that we can't count on seasonal trends? Not as much as we <laughs> used to. And yes, we are always going to see a little bit more activity in the spring and the summer, but what's interesting is more people are pulling the trigger when the rates are lower. And we just experienced that, you know, this past January. You know, mortgage rates took their biggest dip in months. The mortgage demand surged, pending sales went up, inventory went down, mm -hmm. and that's just what we're seeing. You know, a lot of experts have said that that 5% to 5.5% mortgage rate is sort of the key to unlocking the housing market. No pun intended, huh? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Just putting more inventory back on the market. However, when we're looking at the numbers, the data here in Solano County, well, it's telling us that that lower 6%, even under 6.5%, that is huge for buyers. Experts actually predicted rates to be lower this time of year, but since the US economy is so strong and so resilient, we just haven't seen that. You know, when you look at the reports that the Fed uses to determine their course of action, right? Are they going to cut rates? Are they not? We're talking the CPI report, unemployment, consumer spending, jobs report. These are all indicating that the US economy is much stronger than they thought. So everybody now is sort of reassessing their opinions for what they think the market's going to do this year. And if the rates do go down lower at all, with hopefully more data showing that the US economy is sort of softening, then we should see rates lower in the summer and maybe latter half of the year. So whether you're a buyer or seller in this market, you're gonna wanna really lean on a local realtor or a lender. Leaning. Are you <laughs> leaning in this market and be in constant communication with them? You know, because things change weekly. So if you are looking to sell this April or May of this year, you're gonna to wanna to make sure where are rates around that time? Did the feds cut them? Did they raise them? Cause that's really gonna strategize or gonna be your plan of action when putting your house on the market. Mm -hmm. And same thing if you're a buyer. If you have higher rates, that's gonna mean less competition. It's probably also gonna mean though, less options for you or less inventory. However, you'll probably have a greater chance of asking the seller for a concession, meaning that you can get money from them to maybe help you cover closing costs or help you buy down your rate and vice versa, right? If the rates are lower, more competition, more inventory, but you're not gonna be able to, you know, ask for those seller concessions. So that's why it is really important for you to be connected to a realtor or a lender who can give you real time feedback on the market. Cause honestly, it's exhausting for us. And this is what we do as a full time job. And that is why you have us here. While these rates are higher for buyers and sellers, it does present an opportunity for incentives in the new build communities. What do I mean by that? I mean, a lot of our buyers are getting twenty-five to $35,000 from money. the builder. That's a ton of money that they're Long. applying to buy down the rate. They're using it for closing costs. They're using it towards their solar or even design credits. You know, we're only seeing this in the new build areas. They just have more options for their buyers than we're seeing in the resale home areas. And it does make sense. I mean, you think about resale, right? That's the actual owner themselves. They're not this big corporation that has a little bit extra to give. You know, these sellers in a resale, they need every single penny that they can get from it. So they really, you know, they're limited with the amount that they can give buyers to entice them. But that's not the case with new construction. Right. However, 
new construction is very, very fickle. And we saw this even this year in January when rates went back down. All of a sudden they were like, well, buyer, nope. buyer activity has increased, guys. So I think the prices are going to go up. The incentives might drop this week. And then what happened in February, Brandon, when, when the rates went back up again? Emails started coming. Hey, we have buyer incentives for you. Any clients that you have, we're able to give them X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know, their tune changed a little bit. It was interesting. They came back with warm, open, fuzzy hugs as soon as the rates got a little bit more challenging for buyers. So if you're looking for new construction, we would definitely recommend going sooner than later because when you go to summertime, that's going to be not only a higher activity for buyers just seasonally anyway, but the rates could be getting lower by then, which means not only will you be paying more money for that house, but you'll be getting less incentives on top top of it. So if you can mm -hmm. try to take advantage of these incentives now, because like we mentioned, those builders are not going to be generous unless they have to be. And ultimately, like we say in all of our videos, if you watch our videos, you should bring a realtor with you, hire a realtor, someone who's an expert in the field that knows what they're doing because they can negotiate more money for you. Mm -hmm. We've gotten our clients new appliances, you know, blinds, just different things that closing they're not going to closing cost that we can help with. So if you're looking at resale homes here in Sonoma County, you can still be hopeful to get some credits. Yes, it's still a hot market. In February this year, we have seen 42% of homes sold receive multiple offers. Now, that's a lot. It's a lot. But it's very hopeful for you buyers because unlike 2021, 2022, when those multiple offers meant 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, sometimes over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars over asking, 44% of those homes that had multiple offers this last month in Solano County in February gave concessions to the buyers, meaning that the sellers gave the buyers money to either help them with the repairs found in the inspections or to help them buy down their rate or to help cover closing costs. That's kind of crazy because in any other kind of multiple offer situation with other, you know, buyers, concessions aren't going to get accepted. It's mm -hmm. like, no, this offer is clearly way above. They're not asking for anything. They're the winning offer. So with five offers on the table, multiple offers, they're still getting concessions. That's, mm -hmm. that's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It tells you where that market is. The right. high rates combined with the higher price homes that we're seeing, mm -hmm. it's important for sellers to understand you are going to have to compromise more than likely. Boo, I want my money. <laughs> Unless you have an extremely <laughs> unique product that is just not on the market, mm -hmm. it's a very good chance that you're going to have to compromise something with the buyer because right now, if you put yourself in their shoes, it has never been harder to afford a home and they need all the help they can get. Good point. So we talk about compromise, how much compromise? Well, over a third of the homes sold in February gave an average of $10,000 in concessions to the buyer. Good news to the buyer, they can use that $10,000 towards closing costs. Mm -hmm. They can buy down their rate. That's just more money in pocket. Now you're not gonna see as much money like a new build giving 25 to 35,000, mm -hmm. but $10,000 in this market I think it's still very generous. So whether you're a buyer in this market, you may be thinking to yourself, is right now the right time for me? Now everyone's situation is gonna be a bit different. Even if you can't afford it, is right now still the right time? Maybe it's not. You have to pick your poison essentially, right? So either you're gonna buy now at the higher rates, lower demand, concessions in place, or you wait, you know, you're not gonna get the equity you're gonna get now. You wait till later where demand's a little bit higher, but rates and your payment's gonna be lower. It just depends. Like everyone's situation's gonna be a bit different. So just understand every market is gonna have its pros and cons. You know, we still remember back in 2021 mm -hmm. where rates were low, houses were flying off the market. You were in that house for five seconds. <laughs> you were paying over value for it. You weighed the appraisal, mm -hmm. you weighed the inspections on a house that still needed a lot of work to be done. The 2021, 2022, yes, it was more affordable, but in hindsight, it actually was kind of a costly market to some people who maybe didn't have the right tools or the right professionals to help them navigate it. So just understanding, like Brandon mentioned, the pros and cons of each market is essential for you and your success in real estate. So what about our sellers, Lily? What should they do with their home? Well, just like the buyers, that's really going to depend on the home that you're selling. If you maybe have a home that's a little older, maybe in just so-so condition, you either don't have the money or you just don't want to put the money into your home to maybe have some more modern aesthetics to it, give it some more curb appeal, then we would strongly suggest maybe waiting until 
rental rates go a little bit lower to put your home on the market because that's going to put you in a more advantageous position. You're going to have more buyers, thus you'll be more likely to kind of get into that multiple offer scenario. And that's when we see the price, you know, what you're getting the net profit be increased the most. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a home that is an extremely unique product, maybe it's in, you know, an extremely sought after area with all of these, you know, updated features, things turnkey. like turnkey. Yeah, turnkey, the backyard, right? These are all these features that we're seeing a lot of. Then yeah, your home's gonna go for you can put it on today. You will probably be in a multiple offer situation. You'll get over asking price for it. And speaking of that, you know, we had an updated home in Paradise Valley in Fairfield, California that just sold for over asking. The kitchen, the house was turnkey. I mean, the kitchen was to die for. It was mm -hmm. a beautiful home. Made me a kitchen addict. Honestly. Made her a kitchen addict if you see the video. But four days on the market, multiple offers, they got $10,000 over asking. And we're seeing the same thing even in a higher price point. Take this Vacaville home, for example. It was on the market for almost $900,000. But as you can see from the picture, I mean, it was in a very sought after neighborhood, had an extremely private backyard with views to die for. I mean, it went pending in days with multiple offers. We know because we had a client who was interested in it. So, you know, it really goes to show you that no matter the price point, if your product is unique, unique enough, it is updated, if it has all of the sort of buyer trends that we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. it will go. Again, like we mentioned earlier, you want to talk with a local real estate agent who understands the market, can look at your home and say, okay, in this market, this is sort of, you know, your home is a product, this is where it lies, and this is what I think we can get for it. So it really just depends on, you know, do you need to move now? How much do you want for the home? And what are you willing to put into it? So let's not forget about the contingent buyers. A contingent buyer is anyone who's trying to sell their current home to buy their next home. Now, right now is going to be an excellent time in the market to do so because of the decreased buyer activity. You know, sellers are more open to accepting your offer being contingent and waiting for you to sell your house in this market mm -hmm. rather than, you know, a high demand market. They're not going to want to wait for you to sell your home, things fall out of contract, and everything that entails with that. So mm -hmm. just be mindful of that. As soon as the rates get lower, demands back up, that sort of popularity is back. We've seen it even with Foxborough and Knowles, which is a new construction construction community mm -hmm. here in Vacaville. They at first said that they were going to take contingent offers or buyers who were contingent, but now they're so popular, they're like, sorry, I can't do that. And well, that's the exact same thing that we're gonna see in the resale market once those rates go lower. So that was our market update here in Solano County. We hope you took a lot of good nuggets away from it. So if you are a buyer or seller looking to take the plunge, <laughs> you are ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. We really do put a lot of time and energy into so making, <laughs> so much into time. making this helpful <laughs> for you. So we really do hope that this puts you in a better position moving forward, going into the market this spring or even summer. So if you're looking to make a move here to Solano County, we'd love to help you. Let's connect. Give us a call, text, email, or even schedule a Zoom meeting in the description in the link below. But until the next video, Ratliffs out. And just like any other county, your mother's gonna go. Your mother. I was, did I say your mother? You oh my gosh. Your mom. <laughs> and just like any other counties, your mother's gonna your mother. <laughs> <laughs> your money. Let's go slow. I just go fast. And just like any other county, your mother's gonna <laughs> your money? Yeah, your money. Money. I was like, don't be bringing up people's mothers, right? It's very personal. But we've never just noticed in February alone, 42% have received multiple offers. Yowza! Okay. I didn't see you say that correctly. It's a multiple, <laughs> multiple <laughs> offers. Oh my God. Did I have a clean cut before? I, like no, I would just say it. that again. I think you okay. uh, you have a lot of good thoughts. I think we're all kind of just. Yeah, so now I'm like, too yeah. many thoughts combined yeah. on just, the fly. Yeah, <laughs> okay. say that again. Okay. It's a lot of